So at least four central banks have their interest rates set in the negative territory right now, and a few have them set very close to zero. Um, why do these banks have negative interest rates? What are even negative interest rates? So to think of a negative interest rate, I want you to think of the interest rate on your bank account. Um, if you have a typical commercial bank, that interest rate may be as low as 0.01%, but the idea here is that oftentimes we, in our everyday life, accept what is effectively a negative interest rate. So if you're familiar with your interest rate on your bank account, it's the amount of money that your bank pays you for the benefit of holding on to your cash, because theoretically, right, you're lending your bank money. Um, for that, in return, you're supposed to get an interest rate. But often, consumers of regular bank accounts, they end up with scenarios where they end up paying for the benefit of holding the account. For example, you may get an interest payment from Chase every three months, but how often do you incur an overdraft fee? Or how often do you incur a fee for transferring funds between accounts too frequently? Or any other numerous fees that consumer banks can charge you? This is effectively the same thing as a negative interest rate. The idea here is that you end up paying the bank for the benefit of holding on to your money rather than the bank actually paying you for the benefit of having access to your money. Um, so that's negative interest rates on a more personal level. But how does this, this extrapolate to the idea of negative interest rates in a macroeconomic environment? Well, central banks set interest rates in their economy through various mechanisms, but most of them involve the buying and selling of bonds, with the idea that lower interest rates reduce the cost of doing business in an economy and therefore should be expansionary. They should spur economic activity. At some point, though, a central bank could theoretically hit what we call the zero lower bound, in that their interest rate for whatever their main rate is that they're targeting could hit zero. And for a while, as economists, we thought that there would be no way to reduce interest rates below zero because if your interest rate went into the negative, why would you even hold your money with that bank? Why would you not just withdraw your money and put it into a box? Anything that would at least only lose value to inflation. The idea being that negative interest rates could be avoided. There are a lot less chances to stuff away billions of dollars under a bed and up to a certain point you may as a large cash holding investor just tolerate a negative interest rate. So central banks in some countries have taken advantage of this and have instituted interest rates that are nominally, that means not after taking into consideration inflation, but nominally in the negative realm. I should say that specifically negative interest rates for a bond would be like you as a person buying the bond paying back the person who you're loaning the money to in the sense that if you bought a bond for a hundred dollars which would be the equivalent of you loaning a bank a business a government a hundred dollars if they had a negative interest rate on that bond of negative 10 percent and the bond had a maturity date of let's say a year that would mean a year from now instead of getting back a hundred dollars and definitely not getting back hundred and ten dollars what would actually happen to you is that you would get back ninety dollars because the negative interest rate is a ten percent negative ten percent interest rate means that for a hundred dollar being loaned a hundred dollars being loaned out in a bond in return at the end when the bond matures you're only going to get back ninety dollars you're only going to get that you're only going to get back ninety percent of whatever you loaned that institution or body why would they institute a negative interest rate once you hit the zero lower bound, there is a possibility that just pushing more cash into the economy through other mechanisms may not be effective enough to increase demand for money for the use of expansionary kind of activities. So just pushing more cash into the economy may not necessarily uh, stimulate investors to invest into the economy. The idea of a negative interest rate, though, is that you basically set a timer on the cash that's being held by these uh, 
economic agents. So, for example, if you're a bank that's just holding on to a ton of reserves and you're not making the loans necessary to multiply cash in the economy, the monetary policy authority in your economy could set a negative interest rate, which would basically mean that every month or every whatever period, a certain percentage of the cash in your reserves would be depleted. That would put a stronger amount of pressure on you as a bank to say, instead of hold on to that cash, instead find any type of opportunity to turn that cash into a yielding uh, vehicle, into an investment that will yield you some level of return. It basically reduces your aversion to risk because the negative interest rate itself acts as a bigger incentive than just having rates at the zero level. For the Federal Reserve today, and even during the Great Recession, they were very unlikely to move towards negative interest rates. Or I should say they didn't have a real appetite for moving towards negative interest rates. A lot of that was because the way that interest rates impact the financial economy in the United States is very different in some aspects from how they impact the financial economy even in Europe. And there are questions as to how, for example, the money market uh, would function with interest rates are negative. Uh, There are certain financial tools that we have in the U.S. economy that depend upon access to cash in a way where a negative interest rate may have unforeseen effects. At the same time, though, we should consider that ample data has come out through various studies, including some conducted by the Federal Reserve or uh, researchers at the Federal Reserve, that suggests that the depth and length of the Great Recession would have been greatly reduced had the Federal Reserve moved towards a negative interest rate environment. So the question today is, if the Fed isn't willing to go into the negatives as far as their uh, federal funds rate, um, what would they be willing to do? As of this recording, the Federal Reserve has brought their interest rate, their federal funds rate, to a quarter above zero. So the ammo is running out, and the question still stands. If they're not willing to go into negatives, what are they willing to do?